वेलकम 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 तो टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फैक्टर्स व्हिच अफेक्ट द कंपोजिशन ऑफ मिल्क सो लेट्स सी हाउ विल वी डिफाइन मिल्क सो देयर आर थ्री डेफिनेशन ऑफ मिल्क व्हिच आर गिवन ऑन द स्लाइड्स फर्स्ट इज एस्पेरिक केमिस्ट सो दिस डेफिनेशन बाय एस्पेरिक केमिस्ट दैट मिल्क इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स सब्सटेंस मिल्क इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स सब्सटेंस कंटेनिंग फैट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इमल्शन फैट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इमल्शन कैसिन एंड समरल्स इन द क्लोरोडल स्टेट एंड वे प्रोटीन सेलेक्टोज एंड समरल्स इन द solution so this is the definition as per chemist how a chemist will define milk milk is a complex substance containing fat in the form of emulsion casein and some minerals in the colloidal state whey proteins lactose and some minerals in the true solution no second definition is by by as per a biologist so how a biologist will define milk milk can be defined as the natural characteristic secretion of the mammary gland of the mammalian animals to provide immediate nutrition to the offspring now uh, there is uh, another definition which is the legal definition of milk as per the act of 2011 that food safety and standards regulations 2011 that milk may be defined as the whole fresh clean lacteal secretion obtained by complete milking of one or more healthy milk animals excluding that which is obtained 15 days before or 5 days after calving or other periods so as to render milk practically cholesterol free and containing minimum prescribed percentages of fat and acetone The total urea content in milk shall not be more than 700 ppm. Total urea content in milk shall not be more than uh, 700 ppm. Now, uh, coming to structure of milk. So, uh, if we uh, see milk under a microscope with one-time magnification, milk appears as a opaque liquid. So, if we see observe a microscope under with one one-time magnification, that is no magnification, then milk is appears as uh, like a opaque opaque liquid. and uh, if we observe it under 1000 uh, time magnification we will see that fat globules will become visible so here this figure is of 1000 uh, time magnification under a microscope fat globules are visible as we know that fat globules are ranging in size from 0.1 to 22 micron so they start becoming visible now uh, further magnification that is 1000 magni magnification if we go further magnification we will see that even the casein micelles are also visible so as we know that casein micelle size is ranging is around you know, 360 nanometer so uh, average size is around 360 nanometer so uh, these are in nanometer so if you further go further increase the magnification even the casein micelle are also visible now uh, if we see the components of milk so milk uh, can be divided into water and total solid so here uh, we have major component of milk is the water and then uh, other component as the water is the total solids and total solid can be further divided into fat and uh, solid solid not fat that is uh, uh, solids which are not fat that is the solid not fat now under fat we have triglycerides we have phospholipids steroids fat soluble vitamins adek and under solid not fat we have nitrogenous component carbohydrates minerals enzymes and vitamins now under the nitrogen component we have protein and non protein nitrogen so under protein we know that we have caseins alpha casein beta casein gamma casein kappa casein uh, so all type of caseins are there and npn we have uh, non protein nitrogen ammonia ammonia amino acids urea uric acid creatine these are the examples of non protein nitrogen and uh, our proteins as we know that the caseins and whey proteins are the pro uh, major proteins are present in milk so whey proteins under whey proteins we have alpha lactoglobulin beta lactoglobulin immunoglobulin bovine serum albumin protein spectrum uh, another uh, lactose we have lactose oligosaccharides salicylic acid so these are the carbohydrates and we have minerals also that is calcium magnesium phosphorus sodium potassium citrate chloride sulfate etc and we have enzymes also that is proteases lipases catalase oxidases amylase xanthine oxidases phosphorases we have both uh, water soluble vitamins uh, in milk also uh, fat soluble vitamins like adek so pc and adek all the vitamins are present in the milk so this way we can uh, uh, see we can categorize the different components of the milk now coming to average approximate composition of cow milk so if you look at the average approximate just to give you an idea uh, how much is the concentration of various constituents which are present in cow milk uh, so uh, water is around 87 point average surface content is 87.3% water lactose is 9% fat fat is around 3.7% protein is 3.4% acid is 0.7% so total it amount to 100% so to approximately 100% of the total components which are present in the cow milk now coming to major topic which is the factors which affect the milk composition so uh, we will study uh, various factors which affect the composition of milk now first line is that milk is not of a uniform article of commerce that is the composition of milk varies and there are so many factors which affect the composition of milk there are wide differences in the composition of milk for different species and breeds of the animals 
the composition of milk varies in response to a long list of physiological inherited and environmental factors physiological inherited and environmental factors the composition of milk varies in response to a long list of physiological inherited and environmental factors the effect, effects of these factors have been studied mainly for cow milk composition so now why the composition of milk varies with because of the physiological inherited and environmental factors now if you uh, if we divide the factors which affect the composition of milk we can divide it into three categories one is animal factors environmental factors and third is the miscellaneous factors so one by one we will be covering uh, uh, these factors in the coming slide so first starting with the uh, animal factors first is species so first first line is under species is that a uh, milk from all the species it may be human cow buffalo goat sheep pig horse donkey reindeer so from all the species contain the same kind of constituents but in varying amounts so all uh, types of milk milk from all the types of species will have the same component they will have the fat also protein also milk lactose also acid content but their uh, amount will vary in the first line and second that growth rate is the inherited trait of the newborn animals so we know that growth rate is the among the different species varies so the composition of milk of each species is designed in accordance with the natural growth rate so faster is the rate of growth the more concentrated is the milk components needed for the growth so this is the first line the faster is the rate of growth so faster is the rate of the growth more concentrated is the milk components needed for this growth for instance cow milk contains 7% protein since the newborn has to double its weight in 9.5 days and the lamb will double its uh, weight in about 15 days that is having 14 4.8% lactose so rabbit milk is having protein 7.10.38% percent takes only 6 days while as human milk is having protein 1.6% so take one 180 days so here we can see that more is the concentration of this for example rabbit is having more protein 10.38% so it is can takes less number of days that is 6 days to double its weight whereas human milk contain uh, lower protein content that is 1.6% percent so it takes 168 days uh, to double its weight so meaning that faster is the rate of growth uh, the more concentrated are the milk components needed for this growth and this can be seen from this table also so here we here we can see that uh, uh, cow milk uh, if we compare the cow milk and human milk uh, here human milk is having 1% uh, protein so it takes 122 uh, 180 days to double its weight whereas uh, if you see in a cow we have 3.4% protein so it takes uh, last time that is 30 to 47 days to double yeah, its weight. So, uh, faster is the rate of growth, the more concentrated are the milk uh, components designed for this growth. So, nature has created this. Now, second factor is breed. So, when we know that there are so many breeds are available of uh, different animals, there are different breeds of animals. For example, in Indian buffalo, we have Jafrabadi, Mesani, Mesana. So, this is Mesana breed, Mesana, Mutra, Sukhati. So some of the buffalo breeds, cow breeds, some of the cow, Indian cow breeds are Gir, Kankres, Ongol. Okay, so uh, Saival, Saival is also Indian cow breed. Some of the exotic breeds are Jersey, Roasting Fries, Pound Stick, uh, Cross we know that current fries and current Swiss uh, developed at NDR Kernal, that is the cooperative of Tartar Kernal Hostel Fries, current fries, and current Swiss is the uh, cross bred of the Saival and the Brown Swiss. Now, there are th these uh, the breeds also differ in their composition. Uh, the composition of different components which are present in the milk. Now, and there is one point to be noted that maximum variation in the percentage fat content of the milk due to breed variation has been observed. So, maximum uh, if somebody asks which the uh, component which maximum varies among the different breeds, it's the fat content. Fat content varies maximally to uh, among the different breeds. So, uh, if you see the composition. For example, uh, percentage fat content of jersey brown is around 518 4.01, 3.55% respectively. Now, these differences are mainly into the uh, difference in the milk production capacity. So, of the different breeds of the animals, so different breeds of animals are having different milk producing capacity. So, uh, these differences are observed that in the composition of the milk. So, more yield, less fat percentage, this is known. So, if more yield, so we know that uh, among uh, jersey hosting fries, and brown sweets it's the hosting fries with the uh, which gives the major yield, more yield and therefore fat percentage is less here jersey is having the uh, least yield so it is having more fat percentage okay so this is the factor which is the breed so uh, among different breeds we have the variation in the composition of the milk uh, and the major factor uh, or the major component which is uh, uh, which is showing the variation among th uh, the milk of different breeds is the fat content 
and uh, these differences are mainly due to the difference in the milk production capacity of different breeds of the animal now coming to individual variation so uh, there is not only there is differences between the breed but within the breed also say if a giri breed is there or saiwal breed is there within mesana breed within saiwal breed within giri breed within uh, within uh, 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 say a uh, hoxan fris breed there will be variation and this variation in the composition of milk of the animal of the breed is due to the individuality of the animal and variability differs partly from the why this variation is there because of the hereditary differences and also from the physiological and the environmental factors so uh, variation within the breed is due to mainly is due to the hereditary di uh, differences and also the due to the physiological and environmental factors for example percentage of fat content ranging from 3.4 to 9 percent in the milk of gear cows for example percentage of fat content ranging from, ranges from 3.4 to 9 percent in the milk of gear cows has been reported so within the gear cows also that variation of fat is there that is 3.4 to 9 percent and this variation is happening because of the differences in the hereditary differences and also partly from the physiological and environmental factors now uh, next comes the breeding and cross breeding now dairy cattle are usually selected and bred on the basis of their milk yielding capacity and fat producing ability so uh, we will uh, in in india we know that there is extensive cross breeding program has been taken up uh, in order to have the uh, increase the yield of the milk and also to the fat content now dairy cattle are usually selected and bred on the basis of their milk yielding capacity and also fat producing ability now milk yielding capacity of exotic cows is very high so that's why uh, one one breed is selected is a foreign breed and another will be indian breed which is more ad adaptable to the indian conditions and will be high giving the higher fat content so one bull and high one bull and high milk yielding cows are selected for cross breeding so as to increase the yield of milk and the fat content so uh, both the characteristic characteristic good characteristics from both the breeds are taken up by the a cross bred animals so hence in india uh, extensive cross breeding has been taken up so for example we know that cross bred current rice is a cross bred of tharpar cow and holstein fries bull and similarly current species is a, a, a cross bred of the saiwal cow and the brown swiss bull purpose is to increase the milk yield and also the fat content in the milk so uh, coming to yield of milk so we know that if amount of yield now uh, if the amount of milk yield by cow per milking mainly affect the amount of fat content in milk so more is the yield less will the fat percentage this is the known fact that smaller milk and animal animal will give milk with higher fat percentage whereas a larger milk animal will uh, milk yield animal will give milk with lesser fat percentage for example for example hostin fries uh, gives uh, 14 to 16 liter per day of milk and fat content is uh, having a lower percentage that is 3 to 3 to 3.5 percent where jersey is giving is uh, having lower yield of 8 to 10 liter per day and it has more fat percentage 5 to 5.5 percent now remember there is difference between the fat percentage and fat content fat percentage means the percent of milk fat is the amount of fat in the milk by weight the percentage of the fat content of the to the total uh, quantity of milk is how much fat percentage that is fat percentage where the fat content is that how much uh, fat content is there by weight made by the butter fat that is the difference between uh, fat content and fat percentage so, a, a, a milk from a cow may have uh, a higher fat percentage in compared to the animal anima, uh, other milk of the other other animal but fat content may be higher or lower that that may also so uh, let us understand this concept by example say uh, a, a milk uh, a breed is coming which is giving 10 liter of milk per, 10 liter of milk per day with 4 percent fat so if we see the fat content is uh, around how much 4.4 gram per 100 ml okay so another bit is there which is giving a higher yield 15 15 liter yield it, uh, it is giving and then it is having a fat percentage of 3 percent say so it will have 0.45 gram per 100 ml of fat content so fat content is higher in this uh, high producing animal whereas uh, uh, the in uh, the breed which is giving 10 liter of milk is more of fat percentage but less of the fat content so there is difference between the fat content and the fat percentage this way we can remember it now coming to uh, another factor which is age and number of lactation so we know that with increase in the age number of lactation of the cow there is slight decrease in the fat and as enough content of milk that has been observed so as the age increase as the number of lactation of the animal increases there is slight decrease in fat as a uh, fat and content of the milk has been observed so a decrease in 0.2 percent fat and 0.5 percent as enough of milk after seven years of lactation have been observed 
so a decrease in the 0.2% fat and 0.4% as of oat milk after 7 years of lactation have been observed so as the age of the animal uh, increases per lactation the fat content of milk decreases by 0.5% so this also has been reported in literature that uh, as the age of the animal is increasing per lactation the fat content has been observed to decrease by 0.5% Now another important factor is the stage of lactation. Now we know that the composition of milk produced by cow changes considerably with progress of lactation. The greatest change is occurring at the beginning and the end of the period. So during lactation we know that co composition of the fat, uh, composition of different uh, components present in milk changes. Uh, but major uh, changes occurring or the greater changes occurring at the beginning and the at the also at the end of the period. Now colostrum as we know that is the initial secretion of the perturation different from the normal milk in that, that it contains more of mineral salts, total protein, casein, serum protein and less lactose. So uh, colostrum the initial secretion after the perturation differs from normal milk in that, that it contains uh, more mineral salts, total protein, casein, serum protein and less lactose. Now concentration of lactose decreases progressively and significantly during the uh, lactation. So here uh, if you see this graph we can say that the lactose is uh, decreasing progressively and significantly during the lactation. Now if we compare with this with fat, we can say that in fat and protein first they decrease, uh, during early lactation they decrease and then increase strongly during the second half of the lactation. So for both the fat and protein is that during the early lactation uh, they, they decrease and then uh, increases strongly during the second half of the lactation uh, whereas the lactose is uh, we can say that it is decreasing progressively and significantly during the lactation so th this graph we can have these two lines understood from the this, tool, uh, this graph okay. now similarly if you see the behavior of calcium and phosphorus we can see that here it is written that uh, total calcium is generally high both in early and lactation so here in early lactation it is high and late lactation also it is high but in the intervening period no relation with the stage of lactation is evident that is the, the, this is more or less is co uh, constant there is no changes in the calcium which is happening now phosphorus also so, uh, shows a general tendency to decrease at the lactation at so here we can see that phosphorus is generally decreasing as the lactation is advancing so phosphorus is having tendency to decrease as the lactation advances now uh, if we see the concentration of chloride so here we can see that the chloride uh, content is higher at the beginning of lactation so here it is higher So initially the so initially uh, the chloride content is higher and then there occur rapid decrease so here we can see that, that the chloride content is rapidly decreasing until near the end of lactation where the uh, rapid increase is there so uh, here it is at the initial stages of lactation and the uh, at the end of the lactation the chloride content is higher in between this low. Now if you see the potassium line also the concentration of potassium decreases gradually throughout the lactation. So potassium concentration is gradually decreases throughout the uh, lactation. Now if you see the citrate content, now ci uh, citrate uh, concentration is uh, changing rapid uh, randomly that during the during the lactation. The concentration of citrate which has marked influence on the distribution of uh, calcium shows a strong seasonal variation. So they St strong seasonal variation. Now, if the pH, uh, pH of colostrum is six, as we know that an, uh, initial pH of the colostrum is six, but which increases uh, rapidly in the early stage of lactation to reach the norm normal value of six point seven, around six point seven, shortly after pasturation, and changes little uh, until late lactation when the pH reaches around seven point two. So here, around uh, in the late lactation, the pH approaches near to seven point two. That is approaches of that of the blood. Why? Because there is denaturation of the memory cell and membrane. So uh, blood components also come into the milk. So the pH of milk uh, increases to 7.2 uh, in the late lactation. So uh, these are the components that are changes which are happening uh, happening in the composition of milk during different stages of lactation. Now uh, next factor is the heat or oestrum. Uh, so uh, the fact of heat or oestrum or milk composition is real but inconsistent that there is no consistent trend is there uh, uh, during the uh, during the heat uh, when the animal is in heat there is no uh, consistent change is there but uh, the changes are there so there is usually much variation in the fat content of milk which may be increased or decreased so mainly the main component which is affected uh, during uh, when in the animal is in heat is the fat content uh, uh, which may uh, th there may happen increase in its fat or also decrease decrease may also happen 
Now these changes have been attributed to the increased excitability. So during heat, excitability increases, nervousness increases. So uh, either cow will hold up some of the milk or secrete less milk. So it may that they happen that the yield of the milk in, uh, decreases. It happens that the yield of the milk decreases during the when the animal is in heat or in nostrum because uh, in, uh, there occurs increased excitability and nervousness. So therefore, cow will hold up some of the milk and then there will be secreted the less milk. So this is the heat effect of heat and nostrum. Then comes the variation during the milking. So we know that the fat is the uh, lightest component of the among all the components of the milk, it is the lightest component, so it will float on the upper part of the other, hence there occur variation during the milking. So it is well known that the fat content of milk increases progressively during the milking process. Why it is increasing? Because fat the lightest component, it will be there, it will be the, uh, uh, it will be uh, float, floating on the upper part of the other, so as the milking progresses, the fat content uh, in the milk increases. So it has been reported that for milk is having, high, is having around 1.9% fat, middle milk is having 2.3% fat, stripings are having uh, of the highest fat content that is 6.8%. Now uh, next coming in the gestation period that is in that is the pregnancy. So uh, as uh, this has been reported that uh, there occurs increase in the milk solids that is lactose, proteins, mineral, ash content especially that we start with the fourth month of the progress and continues until the end of lactation. So uh, it has been observed that the, uh, during the fourth month of la la pregnancy uh, increase in milk solids uh, of milk has been observed and which continues up to the end of the lactation. Now, uh, next uh, effect which affects the composition of milk is the infection of udder, mainly the mastitis. So, udder infections greatly affect the composition of milk. So, mastitis, as we know, that is the inflammation of udder, which is mainly co caused by Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus aureus, and Staphylococcus agalactiae. So, these are the two major cogitative organisms of mastitis, although there are so many mi other microorganisms also which can cause mastitis. But these are the two major cogitative organisms, which is Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus agalactiae. Now, uh, it is to be always remembered that during mastitis, uh, the composition of milk changes significantly and there will increase in the serum nitrogen and chloride content, which increases and also uh, there will decrease in the fat, SNF, casein, HDT and lactose content. So, these components decreases, whereas serum nitrogen and chloride increases. Now, cholesterol number. Cholesterol number is defined as the percentage chlorine divided by percentage lactose in 200. This is the cholesterol number that percentage chlorine divided by percentage lactose in 200. And uh, the cholesterol number of, uh, reaches to 4 in the case of uh, mastitis, whereas normal values range from 1.5 to 3. So, normal value of cholesterol number is uh, 1.5 to 3, whereas in case of mastitis, uh, the cholesterol number value in reaches to 4. Now, next factor which affects the composition in milk is interval between the milking. So, it has been observed that more is the interval between the milking. So, uh, there, there will be uh, more yield of the milk, but the less fat percentage will be there. And if the interval is less, then when there will be milk, it will be less and the fat percentage will be more. So, this is known. So, interval between milking influences the fat content of the milk, but has no effect on the solid uh, node fat. So there is no effect on the solid node fat content. So, when the uh, intervals are unequal, the milk yield is greater and the fat content is lower uh, following the long interval so if long interval will be there so fat content will be lower so long interval means there will be uh, that the fat uh, that is the yield will be higher and then the fat content will be lower since under usual management practices the night interval is lower than the day so milk obtain, uh, at the morning milk contains less fat than that the evening milk so under if the usual management management practice is there we know that the uh, um, interval between the um, morning milking and the evening milk is higher so it is obvious that the morning milk will contain less fat than the evening milk so if it is then up to proven that if the interval is greater than 12 years then milk yield increases and the fat percentage decreased by 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 per hour greater than 12, 12, 12 hours so if the interval is less than 12 hours then milk yield is decreases and the fat percentage has been reported to increase by 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 uh, per hour after that is uh, less than 12 hours so per hour less than 12 hours it is in, uh, the fat content percentage increases by 0 0.2 to 0.2 this has been reported now very very important factor is the plane of nutrition plane of nutrition what all uh, feeding practices we, uh, we are following that that also affects the composition of milk now we must know that overfeeding uh, above the level required for maintenance and maximum produ production, which is no consistent change in the composition of milk. Overfeeding is effect of major, uh, major effect of overfeeding is just to fatten the animal. So, if, we, uh, if the 
above the level required for maintenance and ex maximum production if you are uh, overfeeding then it causes no consistent change in the competition level but the major effects of overfeeding is to fatten the animal now next comes the underfeeding underfeeding decreases the milk yield and the sperm content of milk and if you are doing underfeeding the animal what will happen milk yield will decrease and also the sperm content will also the milk also decreases now mature cows it has been reported that mature cows uh, cows which are well fed before coming gives milk which is average 0.28% higher in fat and 1% higher in snf percentage during the first 3 months of lactation than cows poorly fed with coming so it has been reported that mature cows which are well fed before coming gives milk which is average uh, so it's obvious so if you are uh, giving uh, giving uh, well feed uh, good feed to the animal before coming so we that the fat content percentage will be higher and as, as an a percentage will also be higher during the first 3 months of lactation then the cows poorly fed before coming this obvious then another important point is the roughness uh, it has been reported that if feeding lower roughness decreases the fat content of the milk uh, because usual synthetic process occurring in rumen gets affected so feeding lower roughness if here it has been reported that if feeding lower roughness to the animal then when that will be decrease in the fat content whereas as no uh, content is not affected markedly or consistently by reducing the roughness intake now why i remember that uh, why it is happening because the usual synthetic process of the fat synthesis is generally affected uh, because uh, roughness is having acetate and acetate is a precursor for the fat uh, fat to, uh, in the milk so so uh, if we are feeding lower roughness then then obviously that then, then the fat percentage will increase decrease then coming to cotton seed oil so if you are feeding cotton seed oil it has been observed that there occurs increase in the milk yield Uh, and also the unsaturation so milk yield is increases and also the unsaturation will increase this will increase the br reading and the audin value also so that's why you know in uh, some of the cotton fed areas we have found that it is observed that br reading and audin value of the fat uh, from the milk is higher this is because uh, the cotton seed oil increases the unsaturation of the fat then coming to cold liver or charcoal and salmon cold layer oil uh, uh, depresses the fat content of milk by 25% without affecting the milk yield so cold liver uh, liver oil has uh, is having the depressing effect on the fat content of milk and it is observed that that fat content of milk reduces by 25% without affecting the milk yield now this why this effect is there it is caused by highly unsaturated fatty acid in the cold uh, cold liver oil since it is not uh, due to the unsaturated matters but since hydrogen eliminates it so uh, why uh, there is occur decrease in the fat content because there occur hydrogenation is happening in the rumen and also uh, cold liver is also having the unsuitable matter and uh, the fat uh, fat in the unsuitable matter is not influencing the fat so thereby uh, this is causing the fat decrease in the fat percentage of the milk and it is noted the shark oil and salmon is uh, having the no change so again repeating that cold liver oil depresses the fat content of milk by about 25% without affecting the milk yield this effect is thought to be caused by highly unsaturated fatty acids in the cold, cold liver oil highly unsaturated fatty which have, and since highly unsaturated fatty acids most of them are get hydrogenated in the human by the microorganisms so so the fat content will decrease and then uh, also this because uh, unsuitable matter won't affect, uh, contribute to the fat content so thereby the fat percentage will be lowered in in milk now coming to protein content so protein as such is not having much effect on the a uh, protein content of milk the protein content of the ration does not markedly affect the composition of milk although some reports have indicated that a small depression of the protein content of the milk on low protein ratio is there but altogether protein is not having significant effect on the composition of milk then coming to mineral content mineral content is very very important and mineral content of the ration does not greatly affect the gross mineral composition of milk why so if you are feeding more calcium more phosphorus then what will happen it will uh, this this uh, extra calcium or phosphate will uh, will get deposited on the skeleton of the cows so if you are supplementing with extra calcium or phosphorus that is that is adequate in this mineral does not increase the concentration is milk because they get accumulated in the bones or in the skeletal bones of the animals so if you are feeding less that is a deficiency of calcium or phosphate in the ration surely enough to limit the yield of milk do not alter the concentration of calcium and phosphorus in milk why because cow withdraws these minerals from the skeletal reserves so feeding less of calcium and phosphate uh, would change the uh, calcium and phosphate in milk because uh, uh, the, this will be draining into the milk from the skeletal bones 
so skeleton act as the buffer system for the calcium the skeleton is acting as buffer system for the calcium so cow took these animals uh, these minerals from skeletal reserves to compensate the deficiency in the ration conversely uh, supplementation with extra calcium or if you are supplementing more than what will happen these get also accumulated to the skeleton bone uh, and thereby no changes in the calcium or phosphorus in the milk will be absorbed so your skeleton is acting as buffer system for calcium and phosphorus now uh, coming to the environmental factors so what environmental factors will affect the composition of milk so first is season uh, so you know season uh, in india we have a surplus season in the winter when we have the more uh, more amount of milk is there and uh, there is another season which is lead season uh, in summer we have we know that the supply of milk decreases and that is why the milk become too pro prone to filtration uh, in in summer so season so we know that in winter we have the more yield of milk and more fat content whereas in summer we will having the more less milk yield will be there and but the fat percentage will be higher uh, but fat content will be lower so milk yield and the fat content are higher in winter so here it is written the milk yield and the fat content are higher in winter as compared to those in summer and this variation is related to change in both types so why it is happening because feed level will change climatic condition will change so therefore uh, milk yield and the fat content will increase the content of solid non fat displays the same tendency as uh, snf also increases during the uh, winter but the uh, the the degree of increase will be lesser and then there will be irregularity will be there in the snf content so again depending whether in season you what you have to write that yeah we have two season one is surplus season the lean season surplus season you have more supply of milk uh, uh so more so with the, uh, because why because uh milk is in uh, milk yield increases in winter and then also the fat content also increases where in lean season uh the milk yield decreases and then the, the fat content is also decreasing and why this is happening because the feed which is given to the animals also the climatic conditions will cause uh the the increase in the milk yield and the fat content during the winter and similarly that that will happen decrease the during the summer then coming to weather so dry months it was noted if the dry months are there then total yield of the milk tend to decrease along with the decrease in snf so obviously so if the animal is not getting a uh, green grass and then uh, dry months are there then there will be decrease in snf and increase in the fat percentage that has been reported uh, whereas in bad fans there is, there may be decrease in both snf and the snf percentage along with or not uh increase now that, that has been noted so in wet months when there may be increase or decrease there so there is there is the random effect so not consistent effect is there uh we cannot say um, that, uh, that this will, this will happen but it has been reported that in wet months uh there may be decrease in both snf and fat percentages along with or without in the increase in the yield so it has been reported that both high and low temperature lower the ratio of snf to fat so if the animal is kept at higher temperature then also it lowers the fat snf fat ratio and if the animal is kept at lower temperature then also it uh, 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 decreases the snf to fat ratio then coming to miscellaneous factors so three miscellaneous factors we will study one is exercise second is excitement and third is quarter of water so exercise we know that if you are uh, uh, subjecting the animal to the exercise the blood circulation will increase animal will increase more eat more and then if you uh, know to ensure sufficient reserve for energy such animals will eat more and which will indirectly increase the milk yield indirectly it will increase the milk yield so exercise is uh, helping in increasing the milk yield so we are about the reason that subjecting the lactating animal to regular exercise will ensure blood circulation throughout the body and keeps the animal in good condition uh, in, in order to ensure sufficient reserve for energy such animals will eat more which would indirectly increase the milk yield then second factor is excitement so we know that uh, excitement if uh, some some conditions are uh, which are uh, which are produced uh, which are increased the excitement in the anim animals for example uh, if harassment is there fighting of conditions are there such as barking of dogs presence of strangers change of milkers bursting of crackers if these uh, harassment and fighting conditions are there then it will disturb the animal it will reduce the milk yield why because you know that uh, then there will be, there will be increase in the adrenaline and there will be decrease in the oxytocin that which is let down hormone so thereby milk yield will decrease so again repeating that hormones play an important role in animals especially during the milking time so favorable conditions during milk of animals result in good milk yield if obviously so if you are favoring the conditions a uh, favorable condition which are there for the animal then it will increase the good yield milk yield and it has been observed that the, if the uh conditions are not that uh, favorable that uh, there occur har there is happening harassment and the frightening conditions such as barking of dogs uh presence of strangers busting of crackers disturb the animal and reduce the milk yield so if you are changing the milker also then also it will uh, create fear it will uh, can cause excitement to the animal and thereby increasing the adrenaline and and decreasing the oxytocin thereby decreasing the milk yield this like uh, you please points you have to write in excitement then comes the quarter of order 
so we know that uh, uh, four quarters of cows that are, are anatom anatomically separate and distinct they are anatomically separate and distinct and they are also functionally separate they are uh, and not only anatomically but also functionally they are separate each producing milk independently of the others so the four quarters of others are an an anatomically also separate and also functionally they are separate and they are producing milk independently of the e each other now it has been reported that milk which has been first milk first yields milk having the highest fat content whereas milk from the last quarter milk has the lowest fat content so this is the major line that I, uh, the quarter which had been milk first will have the highest fat content whereas milk from the last quarter milk uh, has the lowest fat content so these are the components so what we have studied in this uh, video that we have studied various factors which are the composition of milk and these are some of the books which uh, you can refer uh, on this topic that is the factors which affect the composition of milk thank you